Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your uh, 2021 bonus reading. Uh, we're going to do from now until the end of 2021. So basically the rest of 2021 uh, from whenever you're watching it till the end. So we're just going to see what comes up for you at this time. We're going to take a look at your current general energies in this first row. In your second row, we're going to look at anything unexpected that could be coming up for you. And in your last row, we're going to look at any advice or messages messages from your guides here, Taurus. So uh, Taurus, let's see what is going on for you at this time. Um, this looks really good, <laughs> is what I'm going to say. You have the sun showing up as your center card. The center card is literally the most important card in the nine card spread that I use. So uh, there could be a lot of happiness coming in for you here. I get this like need to surrender is what I would say to you here, Taurus. And I don't mean like you're giving up. I mean surrender as in just kind of like releasing, you know, just like letting things happen, right? Um, just allowing the universe to let things happen as well. I feel like that'd be very beneficial for you here. You start off here with this uh, a burst of magic card. So I feel like there is magic coming in for you here. And you have this tender embrace card as well. I feel like this is saying something that you're nurturing is going to be very successful. I get a very nurturing vibe off this first row. You have the moon and the high priestess, Pisces, you know, Pisces energy. Some of you could be dealing with a Pisces, but I'm also just getting a very nurturing kind of energy here. But it's like something that's in your imagination, I feel, with the moon card. Um, the thing with the moon card is that the moon can represent fears, your imagination, mysteries, uh, the subconscious, things like that. can represent confusion as well. Uh, the world is like the total opposite. It's like completion, accomplishment, good things coming in for you, success. So I feel that there is something that just exists in your imagination right now. Even the high priestess here, the high priestess is a card of opportunity. The high priestess is a card of potential as well. It's a card of something that has great potential. The high priestess is a card of something entering into your awareness. But she normally has the two pillars, the B and the J, on her card. And the two pillars kind of represent a choice. So it's kind of like you have a choice whether or not to uh, jump into something or not. <laughs> so I feel like a very creative energy here, but again, it's something that doesn't exist. I feel like some of you, it's almost like you need to get something down on paper is like what I'm getting here. It be, it be, and I, then I feel like you need to start making something more real. I feel there are a lot of fears um, you know, in regards to whatever it is that you're creating here with the world card. I feel a lot of fear around it. I feel like a, a very uptight energy. I feel like not, like, I feel like I don't want to look at something here with the world card. So, you know, I do feel kind of like this energy of maybe like insecurity, right? And I, but I feel like these are, this is like kind of, you know, part of your lesson <laughs> is to overcome some insecurities. Uh, whatever it is that you're working on with the world card, the world card is like a goal. You know, it's like something you want to complete, something you want to achieve. Whatever it is, it feels bigger than you. And it also feels like it could maybe point out some insecurities in you because maybe it re would require you to do something that you're afraid of doing. So what whatever your goal is here in this first row. And I feel like that's exactly what you need to do is like move towards a goal and make it happen. Uh, very similar to some other readings I've done so far. Uh, you have this nightingale spirit. This card says love is all around. Uh, funny thing about the nightingale spirit is in some of the other decks, um, like the uh, Tarot of the Wild Unknown Animal Oracle, the nightingale is about like being fierce, being bold, uh, really going for something that you want to accomplish. And again, this is in the area of the unexpected. So I feel for a lot of you, you need to kind of like be fierce and be bold. Uh, even in the um, one of the other animal oracle decks, the nightingale, it says something about singing your own song, right? So I feel for some of you, it's time for you to kind of like sing your own song with that card. You have the two of pentacles, the sun, and the Five of Swords here. I feel like this is like what you're afraid of is the Five of Swords as well. The Five of Swords can be like separation, but it could also be like disagreements. Um, you know, it's a card of kind of like needing to come to a compromise as well sometimes. Uh, it can also be a card of greed, but I feel for a lot of you, this is more like abandonment. I feel like what you are fearing is that if you shine your inner light with the sun, 
that you could be um, abandoned. And I, I don't think that that is true. For some of you, again, it could be maybe being, maybe you have been abandoned in the past. And it's almost like that is a thing that could be preventing you from manifesting your wildest dreams over here, Taurus. So I would like release those fears. I do love that you go from the moon to the sun. I mean, that is the natural order of things. You know, the moon comes up, the moon goes down, the sun comes up, right? So it's like you're going in the right direction here. Uh, maybe one of your solutions as well would be teamwork here with the three of pentacles. So if you're trying to overcome some sort of fear, or if you're trying to manifest something on earth, it would probably be a good time for you to work with other people. Uh, I kind of feel for a lot of you that you're going to be very busy. <laughs> you know, I feel like that really, you know, looking at this energy, I think the thing that is unexpected for you is just how busy things are about to get for you in your life. I also feel what's unexpected is how good you are going to be at balancing things as well. It's like, I feel like you have this like a little bit of a balancing act going on here with the two of pentacles. It even says balancing act at the top of the card here. Um, I'm noticing this octopus on the card as well. And in that Tarot of the Wild Unknown Animal Oracle, the octopus is about boundaries. And that is popping into my head. So I do feel like you're going to need to set boundaries here with people in your life um, or also yourself. Like, we, you know, sometimes we need to set boundaries with ourselves, right? It's like maybe we should only maybe we shouldn't be putting all our energy into work. Maybe there are other things that we need to do so that we don't burn ourselves out, right? So it's kind of like your priorities are going to be, it's like you're gonna have to pay very careful attention, I feel, between now and the end of the year to your priorities, to the things that are important to you, um, just so you don't get like overwhelmed, you know? I, cause I, I get like a overwhelming feeling here, uh, Taurus, did I say Virgo? I don't know. I might've been saying Virgo. I apologize. But Taurus, I get this like feeling of overwhelm in, in maybe in the past or maybe just in the amount of stuff that you're going to be doing. And I feel there's a need for you to kind of like make sure you're slowing things down. I also think you need to like value, value your authenticity. You know, the sun is a card of being authentic. It is a card of who you are, right? And so I feel that there is a lot of value in you at this time, Taurus, with that sun card. And I feel like you need to realize that. Um, you know, I, I, and I, I, you know, part of me feels here as well. There's like a lot of busyness going on in this reading, I would say. I feel busy in the reading as well. I feel like this busyness is like, I, I feel like you don't realize how much people will, how much people value you, you know? So it's like, if you're starting a business, for some of you, I'm getting like consulting or something like that popping into my head. If you're like, if you're doing any consulting, um, any uh, like speaking therapy, you know, if you're doing those things for people, I feel like you are going to be kind of like shocked at how valuable people find you. Um, you know, you could be starting a YouTube channel, same thing. I feel like people, you could be um, kind of surprised by how much people value you with the sun card, just by you being your little self, right? That's all you have to do. So um, I would just be you at this time, Taurus. Uh, next in the area of um, messages from your guides, you have the forgiveness card here. I feel like your guides and ancestors want you to forgive yourself for any, for, you know, any delays, any stalls. You know, I'm getting time popping into my head here. So it's like, if you feel like you've taken too long to get to where you are and blah, 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 blah. I feel like your guides want you to release that, let go of that and realize that you're exactly where you need to be at this time. So I would like forgive yourself here. You have the two of swords, you have the five of cups, the seven of wands and the three of pentacles here. For some of you, I do feel like this could be a person from the past. I don't necessarily think that you're like going to a person and, and forgiving them, like just like, you know, like literally telling them you forgive them, but you could just be making peace with yourself here, um, especially with this five of cups. Five of cups can be something that takes up too much mind space. You know, it can be something that we focus on way too much that we need to release. And so for some of you, I do feel your guides are like, like trying to get you to move on from something that you could regret because there's something much better coming in for you. Seven of wands, in the three of pentacles right here. Seven of wands is like drawing a line in the sand. It is like saying, I am never going to go, you know, across this line, or I am not going to allow other people to cross these boundaries with me in general. So I do feel for a lot of you that you could be kind of putting a line in the sand 
with this seven of wands energy and it's like you're going to be creating something with the uh, three of pentacles the reason i say you're going to be creating something here is that the three of pentacles there's a fire triangle the three pentacles at the top of the three of pentacles traditionally make a fire triangle then below it there's a water triangle right below it that water triangle is actually kind of a moon energy it's very similar the water triangle on the three of pentacles represents something that could be made a reality but it just exists in the ether you know it's like an idea so for a lot of you i feel like you could be manifesting something on earth but you're gonna have to take action to make it happen there are three people on the Three of Pentacles as well. There's the person doing the work, there's the lady who's holding the plans, and then there's the other guy on the card as well. It kind of says that like teamwork will make the dream work. So if you have a dream, if you're trying to manifest something or make something happen, you can do it, but it's probably going to be helpful for other people to uh, you know, come into your life and to help you. So don't be afraid of teamwork at this time here, Taurus. But uh, Taurus, let's see where this reading is going. Uh, I'm using the Seventh Sphere Lenormand, by the way, if you're wondering what deck this is. But uh, between the moon and the Two of Pentacles, you have the Animus card. This card is really traditionally called the Gentleman, and it can represent love coming in for you. It can also represent like a lot of happiness. I do feel like there could be love coming in for you here. Um, but uh, I feel like you could be attracting a person who's very busy, you know, who's just a very busy person. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing yet. We're going to have to see. Between the world and the sun, you have the ship. The ship is the ten of spades. It's kind of like a, a boat on the ocean, right? And so it can represent moving. You have the world there. The world can definitely represent moving or traveling. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, I've talked about this a million times. Uranus in your sign. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of you Tauruses were uh, moving multiple times over the next, you know, until the end of 2025. Wouldn't surprise me if you decided to buy an RV or, um, you know, like a tiny home or something like that. That wouldn't surprise me at all, Taurus, especially with Uranus in your sign. Because, um, you know, Uranus in your sign for you, Taurus, has a lot to do with freedom and uh, wanting to be free. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you're probably not going to want to live somewhere. It's like, it wouldn't surprise me if some of you sold a house, got rid of a house, uh, decided to rent as well. That's another possibility with Uranus in your sign. Because it's like, um, you know, you typically with Uranus and Taurus, it's like you don't want to necessarily settle. And this, this is for everybody, not just you, for every single sign, but it's definitely stronger for you because it's in your sign so it wouldn't really surprise me between the high priestess and the five of swords you have the bouquet i almost feel like this is like a peace offering from the universe is what i would say to you here and what i mean by that is i feel like the universe is bringing you peace but not like you know literally i feel like it's almost like the universe is like removing a worry or um it's kind of like drawing something out of you so that you don't have to worry about it any longer so it's like you could be what i mean by that is like you could be healing from a past heartbreak could be anything you know i'm getting kind of everything here but i feel like you're getting to this place of inner peace which is really nice it might not seem big but i do feel this is kind of like a big energy because it's gonna allow you to move forward it's gonna make you feel better uh, between the two of pentacles and the two of swords you have the king of diamonds the king of diamonds is called the fish it is a card of your soulmate <laughs> so uh, pretty much every single sign has had the fish in the reading obviously not everybody's gonna find their soulmate but uh for a lot of you could be finding your soulmate could be a pisces you do have pisces here people always ask me i'm almost positive you showed up in the pisces reading as well um people always ask me does the fish represent pisces no it doesn't but it is you know you have the moon and the high priestess here so definitely possible, but is a card of soulmate. Uh, if you're not looking for love, amazing, amazing card for money. Is a card of a harvest. Actually, with the two of pentacles here and the fish here, this could be like a settlement or a settlement offer. So if you're waiting for a settlement in like a legal matter, it could be a settlement. Uh, it could also represent like, um, you know, like an inheritance or money coming in through something similar to that or like the sale of something. Like you could be selling your house or selling a car, something expensive. Uh, this could be like a settlement in that sense. Uh, between the sun and the five of cups, you have the mountain. Everybody has had the mountain as well. Um, probably because we're going through a difficult transition. 
in the world right now. Um, but as I've been saying to everybody else, where do you get the best views? At the top of a mountain. So you could be climbing a mountain or feeling like you're climbing a mountain, but I think you need to realize that you're going to get the best views at the top of a mountain. Uh, between the Five of Swords, the Seven of Wands, and the Three of Pentacles, you have the Fox. The Fox is like a tricky energy. It can represent a tricky person or dealing with tricky people in your life in general. So I do feel for some of you, it's like you could have been dealing with a tricky person. I feel like you just need to um, let, you know, let go of that person, draw a line in the sand, protect yourself from tricky energy. Uh, your top row outcome here, you have the Anima, Divine Counterparts, Animus, Anima. I'm a thousand percent sure Pisces had these two cards together as well. Wouldn't surprise me if it was a Pisces. Could be any sign, of course. But uh, this is Divine Counterparts here. So definitely could be true love. Doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to either. Uh, traditionally, this is called the gentleman and the lady right here. But again, gender doesn't matter. So I feel like it could be any gender, gender coming in for you. True love. If you're not looking for love, this is a perfect match between you and something else. Like you could be discovering your purpose. You could be um, discovering a job or a business, something that's perfect for you. Uh, middle row here, you have the garden. I love it. Amazing. Um, getting the garden after the mountain is very positive. Um, at least that's how I'm taking it in this reading uh, because I feel it, the garden can represent um, like a place of sanctuary, a place where you're getting to take a break. So if you've been through difficult energy, it's like you're coming up on this time where you're going to get a break from the heavy, heavy energy. In your bottom row here, outcome, the sun. The be you have the sun twice in your reading, basically. The sun in the Lenormand is different than the sun in the tarot, but is basically the same. So a lot of happiness and success coming in for you here. I feel like there's good news coming in for you as well, so I like to see that. Um, having said all that, I feel your most important thing here is that nightingale spirit. I feel this whole, every, without you, this reading doesn't exist. So I feel like you are the most important character here, obviously, which is always true, but I feel like it's more true for you, Taurus. I feel like you need to make sure that you're present. I feel like you need to make sure that you're being heard and that you're sharing your voice at this time, because I feel that there is clearly great value in you at this time with the sun here as the center card. Uh, so I would not hide anything right now. I, I'm not saying you're hiding things. I just think you need to share yourself. And that could mean you could be um, putting videos out on YouTube. You could be writing a book. You could be, uh, this could be in other areas of your life as well. It could be at work or business. You, it, it just saying that you could be doing more. And uh, I would do more because you can do more. And that will just lead to more abundance in your life, more good stuff coming in for you. So I feel that for a lot of you. For others, I literally feel that some of you could be moving to, to the mountains here. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe you're moving to Colorado or something like that here because I feel it uh, right there. Uh, for others, you could just be moving. I, I do feel moving would be beneficial for you just because it's probably going to make you feel better. Again, you know, I would be, if I were you, Taurus, um, I would be doing anything that um, basically could create more freedom in my life if I were you. And so, you know, anything that can free up your time, anything that can free up your brain space, anything that can free up anything is going to be extremely beneficial for not just this year, but until the end of 2025. And that would be my focus is on simplifying things. I've been telling Taurus and Capricorn, both of you, that if I were you, Taurus, I would also be focusing on like the 80-20 rule. The, if you don't know what it is, the 80-20 rule is we get 80% of our results from 20% of the work that we do. I would be figuring out what the 20% is in all areas of my life, and I would be doubling down on those things, right? Uh, to me, um, the 80-20 rule has never been more important than right now, like 2021, moving forward. Um, definitely for you, it, true for everybody, but definitely more true for you. So uh, I would be focusing on like the 80-20 rule and doing things that are efficient, not necessarily things that um, you know require a lot of effort. Um, the reason is, and not only that, I do feel like there is something that is going to require a lot of effort for you. It's like that's why the 80-20 rule is important for you because I feel like there is something that's going to require an effort. So like the more simple you can make the rest of your life, the better. And for a lot of you, this is like a personal project or something that you're working on here that is probably going to make you shine. So uh, I love this reading for you, Taurus. So uh, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. 
Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time, Taurus. But uh, thank you, and definitely enjoy your month.